Season 3, Episode 2, recorded in February 2020. And in this project we're going to make a, an indexing wheel for the lathe. Using a circular saw blade as a dividing head. And this is an idea I got from another YouTube channel. Uh, but I've modified it here. They had an expanding internal collet inside the spindle shaft to lock the, the saw blade in. Um, I decided to use the Morse taper that's in the front end of the uh, spindle as a means of locating the shaft. Uh, this required turning the uh, Morse taper and I did that by using the tailstock offset. So that's something we'll cover later. In the previous episode we set up a milling attachment and I'll use that as well. So those are the things we're going to be covering. I don't have any proper technical drawings of what we're going to make so I thought it would be a good idea to actually show you the finished product first so you can see where we're going. The saw blade has 24 teeth and I'm using it as an indexing wheel for the lathe uh, with a shaft coming through the uh, spindle bore and the saw tooth attached on the end and I'm using a piece of a hacksaw blade as a clicker. Uh, it's supported underneath by a copper strip so that when you turn backwards it'll be supported by the copper when you turn it forwards this clicker will move up out of the way. Uh, so you can lock into any particular tooth on the on the gear wheel, on the uh, saw tooth here. It happens to have 24 teeth on it and that means you can divide it up uh, a circle up into fractions of 24 which gives you um, in terms of divisions of a circle, you can have two divisions for a circle, three divisions, four divisions, six divisions, or eight divisions, or each click of 15 degrees. Of course, you can put different size saw blades on there uh, to, um, to get different angles. So I made this um, support for it, which um, goes, which is supported through one of these screws. This is just a cover plate, really, for the rear bearings, and I used that as a, a screw hole uh, to bolt this onto. It's milled flat on the back and flat on the front there, so I can put a, a bolt through it and a threaded hole in the top as a mounting point for the clicker lever. And you bring that up there, and away you go. Um, it's also designed so that you can take um, gear wheels and use those as dividing wheels. So here's the uh, shaft that I made uh, to go inside the spindle. And uh, it has a Morse taper on this end, it locks into the front end of the shaft, and then this is even diameter all the way down. And uh, I had to make a little sleeve in here, uh, the, uh, a brass bush, to support that end. Thread it on the end, a 12 millimeter, 1.75 millimeter pitch metric thread. And you can see the holes in the end where I've had it turning between senders. Now we're not going to be cutting this taper along the whole 19 inch length of the bar. We're only going to do the length of a typical Morse taper which is 2.6 inches long. And so I'm just going to mark off the 2.6 section which is going to be tapered and the rest of it will end up being parallel. Well, the iPhone and iCloud managed to drop the rest of my video but uh, you get the general idea, you've seen what the end product looks like. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is that I discovered that the Morse taper is actually a sleeve that's been inserted inside the spindle. So it goes down to the narrow point of the taper and then it widens out again. And in order to insert the shaft it has to be smaller than the smallest point of the taper and that means that when it comes out the back end of the spindle it's loose. So that's why I had to make a little brass sleeve uh, to go on right here um, to go into the back end of the of the spindle. And then you can see also I've got a um, reduction in diameter at the very end to mount the circular saw blade on. But also it's wide enough to hold the gear wheels for, uh, from the gear tank. We have a whole lot of spare gear wheels and they all have different numbers of teeth which could be used as um, indexing discs uh, and they'll fit on the end of there as well. Uh, when you're not using the thick uh, gear wheels there's a bronze spacer I put in there to hold the blade in place. In a previous episode I described uh, setting up this milling attachment as quite small 
but uh, here we're using it with a flying cutter to make a flat face on the piece of bronze. The flying cutter is just a lathe tool mounted offset in the chuck so it spins around and, and cuts a circular flat area on the, on the work. And you can of course raise it up and down in a Z direction with the uh, milling attachment and you can move it across the slide in a long way so you've got three dimensional movement. In the next stage I wanted to make a flat area that didn't cover the whole length of the bar so I used a flat fronted end mill 10 millimeters in diameter to cut this area. And here's the finished product. You can see the bronze mount for the clicker and the sawtooth and I've used this successfully a few times already.